Hi everyone, it's David from Motor Motor Press. I have two fully electric cars that compete with each other. I know there are many, many competitors in this market, but I want to compare these two because they're both kind of new to the market. We have on my right side, Polestar 2, which comes from a company called Polestar, owned by Volvo, because Volvo's performance division used to be called Polestar, but now it's an independent company. But both Volvo and Polestar, of course, are owned by Geely from China, one of the largest car companies in China. So they do have a strong backing. It is built in China, but it has a pretty amazing performance for the price. And I'll talk about a little bit more. And on my left, I have VinFast VF8, which is also a new company and a new model. I have been to VinFast in Vietnam, so I'm actually quite familiar with their manufacturing process. And they have a lot of the European manufacturing techniques, including BMW equipment and so forth. So it's actually surprisingly well made, but it is brand new to North America. VinFast is part of the Vin Group, which is a huge organization that owns everything from hospitals, to universities to real estate. So they are the largest privately owned company in Vietnam, and this is their first entry into North American market. So we have the VinFast and Polestar both competing with the likes of Tesla Model 3 and Model Ys. And as you guys know, I also own um, Lexus RZ or RZ. So I'm going to reference both of these back to the Lexus as well and see which one comes to the top in terms of manufacturing quality, drivability, and just the overall package. So let's talk about these two and then compare it to my Lexus RZ. Let's go. Welcome back. So let me do a quality comparison as I always do, comparing the uh, Polestar 2 built in China by a factory that's jointly owned by Geely and Volvo. And then we're going to compare it to VinFast VF8, which is built in Vietnam. At some point, they will have an American factory, but for now, this is coming from Vietnam. Uh, so let's do the gap check as I always do. And I was doing this earlier on both sides, and I was surprisingly impressed by the overall exterior quality of both vehicles, at least in terms of what I can see. Of course, long-term reliability is something that's hard to figure out for now because both of these brands are pretty new but if you just look at the actual gaps uh, it's actually 2.8 millimeter there and 2.7 which is kind of unheard of in this price range but in general even if you compare it to my Lexus RZ this is better because Lexus is about 3.2 millimeters but the door gaps are more normal at 3.2 and then 3 millimeter and then about 3.1 millimeters. So overall, the gaps are actually very good. Everything lines up in terms of the creases, the body panels. So even though you might wonder about Chinese manufacturing quality, well, from what I can see, it's quite good. I wouldn't say it's perfect though, because this panel right here, this one here, sticks out a bit. Uh, so it's not that perfectly aligned between these two. And then kind of same thing over here this door sticks out just a tiny bit. So definitely the Lexus RZ that we have is a little bit better. What about compared to the VinFast? Let's take a look at that. As I mentioned, it is built in Vietnam, but a lot of the designers and engineers come from the likes of BMW. And so their equipment is actually European. And so I expect the quality to be pretty good, um, but the gaps are not quite the same as the Polestar. We're looking at about 3.9 millimeter. 3.8 millimeter there, although it's actually quite well aligned. And then over here, 3.2, 3.9, and 3.3 millimeter. And again, things line up reasonably well, except maybe some of the door a little bit off, not quite as bad as a Polestar, but this uh, charging port sticks out a bit, as you can tell. So definitely, once again, the Lexus RZ that we have has a better overall exterior quality. That one is built in Motomachi factory in, in what they call the factory zero where the electric cars are produced. Uh, so the alignment is actually not bad, but I wouldn't say it's world class yet. But of course it's a brand new company with a brand new manufacturing method. So I expect these things to get better, but the paint job is actually very good. You can see right here, the quality of paint is uh, pretty good without much of a orange peel on this VF8. We have a little bit of a dent here, by the way, but that's not from manufacturing. I think someone actually hit that part. Uh, and then back to the Polestar, it's a bit hard to compare because the two are different color, 
but also not very much orange peel really good very glossy metallic paint lots of flakes on this particular poster so let me do a quick uh, paint thickness gauge check and then let me see how it goes okay so i got my usual paint thickness gauge to measure the paint thickness in microns so what i'm measuring is the total amount of paint above the sheet metal and i want it to be between kind of 100 to 150 microns so let me measure the hood first in the pole star it's 136 micro microns and then the front fender 145 a couple more places 129 and 138 so i'm actually pretty happy with the result because it's in the upper end of the range i normally see again you want to see between 100 to 150 microns some lexus models are closer to 150 some other cars such as some of the nissan and even the toyota models are closer to 100 but this one is around 130 140 so it's actually a little bit thicker than what i see in normal cars let's see the vinfast paint thickness 124 so actually not bad also because i was really hoping that it wouldn't be super thin 109 so that's more like a normal cars even toyota is around that level 112 it's also pretty consistent which is good and 107 so pretty well about the same as most of the mass produced cars they're usually between 100 to 120 so that's pretty well normal i don't see anything abnormal in terms of paint thickness for either one of these two cars with the poster having a little bit thicker paint so that means they either have an extra layer of clear coat or thicker clear coat which is actually better but even for vinfast this is a pretty normal range so right now in terms of exterior quality it's not perfect but better than expected and in some cases such as the poster's gaps along here is surprisingly good and uh, overall yeah even things like the plastic materials matches well in the vinfast and same thing in the poster so if you think that just because they are brand new models from China and also Vietnam that they won't be well made, actually that isn't the case so far. Let's take a look inside and see how good the quality is. By the way, one kind of strange thing I noticed about the VF8 is the remote lock and unlock, which you have to use this button, which is okay, that's to unlock. And of course you press this again to lock with a key in your pocket. However, it's not offered on the other side, which is very unusual. I've never seen that in any other brand. Usually it's both of the front doors, but this one doesn't have it. It's okay not to have it on the rear doors, because usually that's not offered uh, in a, sort of a, this type of a vehicle. Only luxury cars have both front and back. But to have that missing on the passenger side front door, unfortunately that's unacceptable i think that's really odd and a very strange way to cut costs so i'm hoping that this is some kind of spec error and that it is actually normally standard on the passenger side but um, i've yet to find out if that's the case or not okay so i'm just inside the vf8 now and i'll talk about the quality in a moment but just to give you some basic spec which you should double check based on your country because different models are available for different countries but here in canada the highest performance one is called a plus and that one has up to 402 horsepower i'm just double checking my numbers here 0 to 100 5.5 seconds and up to 378 kilometer of range so it's actually pretty good and the price is very reasonable they have a really aggressive leasing um, payment as well to try to move these cars so they are gaining popularity but of course it's still a, an unknown brand so it's not for everyone uh, but the design is quite beautifully done because they've hired some European designers to do both exterior and interior and it kind of shows this mixture of a brown uh, material with black materials and also some stitching here and Tesla style a huge infotainment system in the front and the cup holders and everything all designed quite well if I do my punch test so far so good not much a little bit of looseness here but I didn't hear it when I was driving but there is a bit of a, a motor sound that you hear when you first uh, start up, which happens automatically when you hop into the car because there's no start button to turn on or off the motor. But there is a bit of like a wee kind of motor sound that you hear throughout the driving, uh, which can be a little bit annoying, I think. Maybe they need to work on that. Uh, otherwise, the infotainment system worked well, but like Tesla, they moved a lot of functionality onto the infotainment system. So to move the steering up and down or to move the exterior mirrors is all done inside the system here, which is fine. It's totally manageable, but I just really don't like having 
basic functions moved into digital format or electric format. I just want real buttons. Thankfully, we still do have button for the radio control and we have power window switches and so forth. Um, but a lot of stuff has been moved into the system, which works quite well. It's a big uh, infotainment system with a pretty responsive interface. So things move pretty quickly. And so I was actually quite impressed with that. And overall, the design looks fine and it looks more expensive than what the price suggests. Uh, but of course, as I mentioned, when I drive, I hear some noise that are absent in the Lexus RZ that we have and also absent in the post I'm driving. So they're not quite there yet in terms of world-class refinement, but for the price, you get a lot of cars for the value. So that I do admit. Now let's take it for a drive and I'll let you know how this thing feels on the road. Okay, so now I'm driving the VFA on the road and I have been driving it for a couple of days now. And you know, it's a lot like many other electric cars. It's smooth, it's predictable. You can control the amount of regen so that uh, you can uh, drive it with more region or less. It's not quite one pedal driving, but it's pretty smooth and overall uh, quite peppy. And the steering has reasonable feedback, maybe more so than the Lexus RZ that we have. That one is very, very quiet and refined, but I don't like the steering feel on that uh, Lexus RZ because it has very little feel to it. But this one has a bit more feedback and the steering is actually quite quick. Uh, and lots of power actually, especially in this particular model, which is the top of the line. If you step on it, yeah, it takes off. Zero to 100, about five and a half seconds. This one is dual motor, pretty good range, and also fast charging as well. So in terms of drivability, you don't have too much to complain. Uh, although, like I said, compared to, let's say, Polestar, I think the Polestar does drive a little bit better, has a slight better steering feel, and feels a little bit more refined. And the Lexus RZ, while it's a little bit numb and neutral, has the sort of most refined feels. But overall, they're all kind of similar, and that's perhaps one of the biggest issues with electric cars is that there aren't that many characters that would distinguish one model from the next model. They tend to kind of feel the same, and only differentiation they can offer is in terms of suspension, in terms of steering feedback, uh, a little bit more in terms of accelerator as well, but even though things tend to be somewhat similar. So I would say the VF8 has a little bit more aggressive feel in terms of acceleration, uh, and also the ride is pretty firm, and the steering has a reasonable feedback. Not great, but reasonable. So again, for this price range, especially with the special bonus they're offering for leasing payments, it's great value. I don't think you can get a Model Y or Lexus RZ or Toyota BZ4X for this price. And so in terms of the overall package, I think it's actually quite good. You have to kind of figure out on your own whether you would be willing to take a chance with a brand new company like the VinFast. That's something that you have to figure out. Maybe you have roots or ties with Vietnam and you want to support that country and that would be totally understandable. Uh, but in terms of comparing just this model uh, with, uh, let's say, Polestar or Tesla Y or Lexus RZ or many other electric cars, I think it's as good as most of those models, but offer maybe a little bit more value because pricing is very aggressive. You can go to your local VinFast dealer and find out what is the exact offer they have right now. But from what I can gather, the pricing is at least 10 to 20% cheaper than comparable uh, competitors. So that's probably the biggest uh, attraction about VinFast and I have to take my hats off to them for a brand new company from uh, Vietnam which is an unknown country for producing cars. They have done a remarkable job to get this point and it's quite a fascinating journey so definitely something that's worth looking at. Now let's hop into Polestar and let's see what the differences might be. Okay so now I'm in the Polestar 2 and I'm going to give you some spec here before we go too far. So this one is a performance pack which has up to 408 kilometers of range which is the smallest one. But if you go with a single motor then you can get up to 505 kilometers which is a really good range. So these are all in kilometers. Uh, this one is all wheel drive but the base model is rear wheel drive. And the base model has 299 horsepower. I'm just reading off the spec here. Uh, but the performance pack has 476 horsepower and whopping 546 pound foot of torque. So 
actually for um, kind of mid-priced, uh, mid-level crossover type vehicle. This one is quite impressive in terms of the actual numbers. Uh, and uh, performance actually shows that because when I step on the accelerator, the thing takes off with a huge punch. But let's come back to the interior here so I can kind of show you whether or not I like the interior's basic design and also the quality. I think in terms of material fit and finish, it is better than the VinFast and the selection of materials are also really good. You might be concerned about the origin of manufacturing, which is China, but actually the manufacturing quality and the manufacturing capability of uh, Chinese companies in China have been really good. They've actually proven to be quite reliable. So there's no issues with that. I do find it pretty simple and this infotainment system not quite as big as the one in VinFast or even compared to some of the competitors like my Lexus RZ, which has a, a huge 14 inch uh, infotainment system. So it's simple, it is a Google based system and then it's easy to use uh, by finding the whole interior quite simple. You might like it because of that and you have kind of a nice texture materials, but it's not for everyone because for some people you might want something a little bit fancier. Now let's take it for a drive and let's see how it goes. So now I'm driving the Polestar 2 and definitely this one it feels a little bit more refined and more mature than the VinFast. The VinFast has a pretty aggressive feel to it, especially when you step on the accelerator. But I like the feel of the Polestar 2 better. It does feel a bit uh, more refined and mature. Actually quite similar to the Lexus RZ in terms of the balanced feel. But the steering feel has a bit more feel to it, a little bit more weight to it. Uh, feels a sportier. I mean, there's only so much they can do with electric cars anyway. But overall, the Polestar 2 feels just a bit more planted, and so I do like it a lot. Um, the Lexus RZ that we own is actually quite uh, liked by our staff who drives it, but it doesn't have much of a character. You know, it's what I call the soulless car because it's smooth and refined, but it's also somewhat boring. Whereas the Polestar 2 definitely has a little bit more character, mainly because the steering has a good weight to it, a good heft to it. Uh, almost to the point where you can convince yourself this is a, a sports machine. It's, it's not quite a sports machine, but it has a performance of a sports machine because of the acceleration, because of immense amount of power and torque, and then it has a good steering feel to go along with those power and torque. So I actually do like it a lot. It's very reasonably priced. It's about the same price as a VinFast VF8. For that matter, it's about the same price as many other competitors in this um, market. But I think this one is uh, more fun to drive than others. So I would say that if I were to pick an uh, electric car right now in the crossover style in this price range, the Polestar will be my choice because of the fact that it has the best overall steering feel and it's actually quite sporty. And the ride is stiff as well, but a little bit smoother than what I find in the VinFast VF8. I would say the Lexus RZ is the smoothest in terms of ride and no surprise there because it's a Lexus and its intended purpose is to provide the most refined ride. But this one is not too far behind Lexus. So what can I say? People don't know Polestar. Polestar is also a new company and some people might have some reservation since it's built in China, it's owned by a Chinese company and that may not be to your liking. But if you're just looking at this car objectively and looking at the pricing, the value, the performance, the feel of it. I think it's one of the best ones out there for this price range. And so far, based on what I've seen outside and inside, I have no concern about the manufacturing quality. We just don't know the long-term reliability yet. But so far, cars coming out of China has been quite reliable. So I have a good confidence that the Polestar 2 will remain reliable over longer term, but we'll have to wait and find out. So hopefully you enjoy my videos comparing the Polestar 2 to VinFast VF8. Both are new entries to this market. Both are somewhat unknown to general public and they both are trying to do something similar but with their own personality and with their own character. Having said that, there's only so much you can do in terms of changing the characteristic of electric cars because they tend to all feel the same. Uh, but right now, given a choice in this price range, if I want to buy something reasonably fun to drive, this will be my first choice. If I want the smoothest, most refined feel, um, but with some sacrifice in range and charging capability, it will be the Lexus RZ. And if I want the best value, it will be the VinFast VF8 because they're offering some aggressive pricing. Anyhow, there are many other choices as well. Let me know in the comments below what you think. And if you got some questions, also let me know. 
please give me a thumbs up when you have a moment and if you haven't done so yet would you kindly subscribe as well until next video i'm signing off for now thank you so much